I have got some ghost stories for you. I come home from the gym and the chairs are all stacked upside down, like a very intricate stack. There was a werewolf on our porch swing holding one of our kittens. The pen was all busted open and there is blood everywhere. There's like somebody standing in the middle of the bed with their finger pushing straight up on the canopy, like a tent pole. But there's nothing there. And I laid in bed like a little kid. I pulled the covers up over my eyes. <laughs> this little boy told paranormal investigators, apparently my grandfather came back from the dead to harass a toddler. <laughs> so that is my ghost story. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Haunted AF, the podcast of real ghost stories told by real people. We are your hosts. I'm Julie Fist. And I'm Rebecca Black. So coming up in just a little bit, we have a story about... Uh, the story's so great. I've been sitting on it for two weeks. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love that. About a ghost who actually saved someone's life, what? maybe a whole family's life in a spectacular way. Wow. And we also have a story. I feel like this is the first time someone's tried to legitimately prank us. Oh, really? And I can't decide. I almost, okay. I, I wasn't going to share this story, but it's such a good story. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there and let Pranks everybody. Or not. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, we'll let people decide, right? Exactly. It's going to be up to you guys. I love that. Okay. Well, before we get started, we have to thank our new patrons, Angel Soto, Jackie Wilson, and the Paranormal Princess. Hey, lady. I like that. Uh, also, thanks to Curtis and Amanda, who became annual patrons. That's the same Curtis who recorded the Dead Pet of the Week theme song last week, I think. We actually post exclusive content on Patreon weekly and and we don't bleep out the bad words because uh, over here people will listen with their kids. Yeah, we speak like you know <laughs> normal, like humans. salty grown ups. Yeah, so we bleep it here, but over there we don't. Uh, we also need to share some of the emails that we got real quick. Damn it, we didn't get a single weird stuff I've seen on the side of the road story yet. How is that even possible? I don't know that really because we had the whole story about Bandage Man last right. week. And we were like, hey, send us your stories. And we didn't get a single one. I know people have seen. I mean, I've seen so. I could Same. do a whole I could episode too. just on that. I get stuff or stuff driving in the car. Yes. Like I saw a dude with goats in the back of the car. What? 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 Why? Why do you have goats in the back seat? Did you follow him? No, I should have. Yeah, you should. I would follow. Hopefully oh, I he... saw another guy with a coffin. Like oh! he bought a coffin at Costco and just loaded it in the back of the bed of the truck and was driving home. And he's like, it. "Happy Valentine's yeah! Day to me, baby." <laughs> um, okay, so what we did? People are still sharing their dream stories, and we might even be sharing dream stories for weeks because we've gotten a handful. I'm like, "Damn, I got to share that one too." So um, this one comes from Daryl in Missouri. He okay. says, "This happened in early March 2005." when the University of Illinois men's basketball team was undefeated with one regular season game left to play. Now, I have no connection to UI. I'm not alumni, not a fan of UI, or even college basketball. I live in St. Louis, so media covers the team, but that's it. Well, I woke up on Sunday, March 5th, after a dream about the Illinois team losing. Mm. I had heard stories of dreams coming true, and this one was so vivid and specific that I felt the need to document it just Whoa. in case. So that morning, I logged into my work email, and I sent the attached email to a coworker. So it's a dated email describing how the team was going to lose okay. that night, very specifically. That very night, the Illinois team lost after a three-point shot exactly <gasps> how I had dreamt it. He even sent a YouTube link. No, so of that shot. Way. Yes, yes. We'll post that in the companion blog at hauntedaf.com. That is awesome. He says the only other time I remember having a dream that came true was the OJ <gasps> verdict coming back as not guilty in the first day of deliberations. That one wasn't as vivid, and it might have just been a good guess. Certainly nothing as detailed as the Illinois loss, and unfortunately, wow. I didn't put any money down. That was my question. Yeah. If you put money on the game, he didn't. Oh. He says, "Love the podcast, Daryl. Did you ever see that Saturday night?" live episode where it was Christopher Walken doing a whole skit about the dead zone, his movie where he could predict the future, but it was all really lame stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, vaguely. Yeah. Like you're going to lose your keys for five minutes and then Ooh. you're going to find them. Yeah. Yeah. So no. <laughs> it's kind of like premonitions that you can't do anything with that nobody cares about. Those are the kinds of dreams that I would get. Yes. <laughs> like, all right. Your lost earring. Here it is. Here. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I bought a new pair already. <laughs> okay. So this story comes from Loretta and it's another one that's been sitting in our inbox, oops, for months. 
Sorry, Loretta. Um, it started when I was about five. I'd hear the front door of our house open and then close. I would hear footsteps coming across the floor downstairs and then up the stairs. And as it came up the stairs, I'd start smelling like gun smoke or gunpowder. And five-year-old me did not know really what gun smoke or gunpowder smelled like, but I knew that's what it was. And then I would start seeing something dark materialize at the end of my bed. I did tell my mom and she put it down to overactive imagination and got me a nightlight, which helped but didn't help because now I could see the dark shape a little more clearly and I would hide under my blankets. Um, then just before my 13th birthday, we moved. I was very grateful we moved because I thought, finally, all this stuff will be over. Like, I won't have to deal with this anymore. I was wrong. Um, I think that whatever that dark shape was followed me. I don't know what it was, but then I started having sleep paralysis and night terrors. And I told my mom again, we replaced my sheer curtains with blackout curtains. and. It didn't stop the sleep paralysis. Um, I just couldn't see what was causing it anymore. Oh. Finally, I told my best friend in high school what was going on, and she gave me a dream catcher. In about five nights with the dream catcher, no more night terrors, no wow. more sleep paralysis, and I was very grateful. But that's not even what dream catchers are supposed to do, no. though, right? It's supposed to be your, for your dreams. Maybe it's just a psychological thing. Like she thought having the dream catcher or whatever just eased her right with so much stuff is triggered by stress anyhow right so if it does ease her stress then maybe that would be helpful but something to keep in mind anybody who's having night terrors or dream um what, what is that sleep paralysis yeah then hell get a dream catcher right? if it works it works yeah why not our next story comes from Heather, and she says, My mother has always claimed to be sensitive. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I did that. Sensitive. Sensitive. Uh, not in a medium way, but like I've seen more things than most kind of way. She's seen some shit. Yeah. For example, during a trip to Hawaii, my parents wandered over the bridge that surrounds the sunken USS Arizona when my mother heard screaming. She started darting around trying to figure out who it was, which confused the crap out of my father. She even asked one of the guards who, in a nonchalant way, waved it off and said, oh, you're just hearing the soldiers. Ooh. Ah, Ooh. that's, oh, we need to know if that's a thing. Does that happen a lot? I don't know. So fast forward a few years, I'm 16 and an enormous brat. One weekend, my parents took me to Hershey Park, even though it was raining and half the park was closed. My parents wouldn't let me get souvenirs, and none of the rides I liked were open. Just a crap day and a crap mood did not make it better. Even worse, my parents wanted to leave early so we could visit Gettysburg and walk the battlefield a bit. So we were driving to Gettysburg, and my stepfather picks a fight with me, probably because he knew I'd be a little shithead and <laughs> would take the bait. We fought the entire way from the park, then it spilled out of the van and into the parking lot at the battlefield. <laughs> At this point, I'd gone full tantrum and my mother had been dragged into the argument. I was screaming and then in mid-sentence, I sat in the muddy grass with my knees to my chest. I could hear all of it. Blood curdling screams, gunshots mixed with pained cries for help, even though I'd covered my ears. Oh. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and I looked up to see my mother sitting on the ground next to me. She looked out at the battlefield and said, don't worry, it's okay. I can hear them too. Oh, uh, I don't think she understood, but that freaked me out even more. Cheers from Heather. <laughs> cheers, cheers. <laughs> oh, chip, chip, cheer you. <laughs> Little happy ending to my terrible, horrific story at Gettysburg. Uh, I feel like we've heard this a couple of times before people going out to these battlefields, yeah. specifically Gettysburg, yeah. even. Let us know. Has that happened to you? Uh, what's our email address? Again? Haunted AF podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Haunted AF podcast at gmail.com. Look, it's been three years. That's not enough time for me to learn our email address. <laughs> right. Why bother? Why do you expect this from me, Rebecca? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Get ready. If your pets today and you know it, clap your hands. If your pets today and you know it, clap your hands. If your pets today and you know it, but they still like to show up. If your pets today and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> yes! oh, that's adorable. Oh, thank I you love it so much. <laughs> that is from Hannah Banana. Aww. She sent that to us over the summer. Uh, this story, though, comes from Maria. Y'all get ready, okay? Uh -oh. Get some tissues. Oh, no. Okay, uh, I got toilet paper, so I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm writing to you on the eve of having to put my dog down. I'm already sad. 
I know. It's my sweet 12-year-old lad, Daisy, oh, bless. who unfortunately has a tumor in her nose, which causes severe breathing problems. So we had, I feel a little bit like Casey Kasem doing a dedication Oh right my now. God, that's my favorite Casey Kasem clip of all time. Where he's like, who bring me a goddamn dog, <laughs> dead dog story in the middle of a countdown? <laughs> It's literally, if y'all, if you have not seen the Casey Kasem dead dog clip, you have to go to YouTube and look it up because it's freaking amazing. Pause. And we just did that to her story. Pause the podcast right go now. now. Actually, no, 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 no. Go to hauntedamp.com. Are you going to post it? I'm going gonna, I'm yes. gonna to put this in the companion blog. I will put the Casey Kasem has a meltdown. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's episode three, season seven. Okay, anyhow. I'm so sorry, Marie. I didn't mean to interrupt your story like that. Okay, so anyhow, uh, la, 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 la. She has this tumor in her nose that's causing breathing problems. We've had Daisy for 11 years, and she's been amazing. Just happily barks incessantly at people, other dogs, plastic bags, oh. leaves. You get the idea. Well, she is a senior dog and also has arthritis. Poor this makes me getting on the bed a chore. So we had a routine where she would slap the bed with her paw and look at me. I would see the top of her head and her eyes like, hey, lady, get up. <laughs> so that was my cue to lift her onto the bed. They did eventually get stairs for her. So one night last summer, I heard her slap the bed like usual. I said, okay, Daisy, I'll be right there. But I was listening to Haunted Roads by Amy Bruni. Excellent. And I didn't want to pause it. So Daisy proceeded to slap the bed three more <laughs> times in succession. So I looked over, but this time I don't see her eyes. I thought that's weird. So I get up and I looked around the bed. She's not there. She wasn't even in the room. Oh my gosh. I went downstairs and there she was sleeping on the living room floor. I asked my family if she had come down and they said, nope, she had been there the whole time. So what smacked my bed three times? Beats me. Uh, remember to hug your fur babies tight, be well, and happy hauntings. Again, that's from Maria. Oh, oh sweet baby. But really, what was slapping her bed? I don't know. It wasn't Daisy then because Daisy was still alive. Rest in peace, Daisy. Oh, we love you, baby. Oh, and I'll baby. post some pictures too. Sweet oh. little, yeah. Little Daisy baby. Uh, so this next story comes from Angie. She says, when I was seven years old, I would go into my parents' room and sleep in the middle of the night. One night, though, as I stepped out of my room, I saw a girl standing in our kitchen. She was in a hospital gown that was covered in dirt and blood, and her skin was pale and bruised. Ew. She was staring at me through her hair and smiling, but worst of all, she was sinking diagonally through the floor. <gasps> There's a lot of awful happening here. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but I was not dreaming. So I screamed bloody murder as expected. Instantly, I heard the thump, thump, thump of my dad coming down the hallway. So I looked his way. When I looked back, though, she was gone. I slept with my parents that night and the next morning told them what had happened. The wildest part of all of this is that they believed her. <laughs> yeah. Both of them were like, oh, yeah. yeah no, uh, no. Weird sure. stuff happens in this yeah. house. We love the diagonal lady with blood the all over the place. Sinking into the floor. Right. What is that about? What the hell is that? Oh, y'all, quick reminder. We've been having a lot of fun on social media lately. So make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the places. Because we had this really amazing story out of Keller, Texas. <gasps> yes. Which we still haven't Don't gotten know. a resolution. Or an update. Yeah, it's because there was one morning, for whatever reason, out in front of the Keller Town Hall, somebody left this creepy looking, it looked like a Halloween decoration. Yeah. A doll sitting out on a bench out front. And calling her Vicky, right? Vicky the murder doll. Yeah. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so, it's so sweet. Yeah, Keller had some fun. They were like tweeting out pictures of right. it. But then the next night, somebody went out and like took, like dressed as a witch or something and took pictures sitting out. So yeah, it just got creepier don't, and creepier. I was like, I don't know. I feel like the witch thing might be lame. Like, don't go. Yeah, don't ruin it. it was yeah, really cool. it was great as the doll by itself. And then we also shared, I think reshared, I think we told the story about the clown motel in Nevada before. Okay, yeah. Uh, but somebody actually commented, they were like, oh yeah, I stayed there for the no. weekend. And they were like, our lights kept flickering on and off all night. It was super creepy. That place looks so shady though. It that does. could just be like bad wiring or something. I would be terrified to like catch a disease of some sort there. <laughs> you catch, so I don't know. You catch clowns. Clown disease. Tiny clowns <laughs> instead of crabs. <laughs> They're just like honking their little tiny horns all over your body. <laughs> 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 Okay, <sighs> tell, tell your bird story. Oh, I did you see in Chihuahua, like Chihuahua, Mexico, this bird story? No. Okay, what? there's like a huge flock of birds, and they're just all flying along in kind of a swarm or whatever you call them. And all of a sudden, it's like they hit a wall, and they all fall out of the sky. Oh, are you serious? I'm dead serious. Like, you get, like, you, I mean, 
literally it is like they hit some sort of like glass wall and all drop to their death that's uh, i'm so sorry for the birds but that's no, amazing right it's freaky as hell and i'm like well could it have been some sort of weird cloud bubble or air bubble or something obviously it's aliens right it's oh. gotta be okay we're gonna go find that video and we'll post that at uh hauntedaf.com in the companion blog remember this is episode three season six no season seven. Oh my gosh it is season seven okay so here's the story this is an email that we got a few months ago mm -hmm. i'm just not sure about this one okay because at first i was reading i was like this is great and then immediately i was like oh hang on hang on a second mm -hmm. so i'm just going to share it with you guys and see what y'all think um we'll leave it in not uh We'll leave, it, we'll leave it anonymous. Yes, just because uh, I don't want to be calling out this guy. Uh, so this all took place in Michigan back in 2018. It was the summer after graduation. So almost every weekend was grad party after grad party. This one was at my friend's house, which backed up to a small wooded area. By the way, none of us were into alcohol or drugs or anything. We were those nerdy kids who stayed far away from that stuff. Mm -hmm. Around 1130, we thought it'd be a good idea to start a bonfire. While we were sitting around it, we heard noises from the trees, but assumed it was just the neighbor's cat or something. Then we saw something move in the brush. It was slight, but about five feet tall, kind of human-like. We tried to joke it off and convince ourselves it was nothing, but then it got significantly closer, so we went inside. We locked the door behind us and went to the windows where we could see it darting around. Ooh. It was hunched over, human-like, and pale. Then we realized there wasn't just one of whatever it was. There were four or five. This continued for about 20 minutes until my friend and I decided to go home. We were parked <laughs> about 20 to 30 yards yeah, from the house. That's the breaking point when there's four or five of them now. <laughs> oh, that's when we're willing to leave. So now I'm going to go outside Yeah, <laughs> where they are. <laughs> where they can potentially get me on the way to the car. Right, exactly. <laughs> so they go home, the friends leave, they compare notes, and they decided to build another fire a few days later where more of these things show up. And so there was like a period of time, like 20 minutes, we're watching these things out through the window and uh, they sent me a clip of audio and the guy said, like, it sounds kind of like a growl to me. Uh -huh. It doesn't. It just sounds like somebody sitting on a desk recording something. And like, I didn't hear anything at okay. all that sounded creepy. So anyhow, he did post his story on Reddit because mm -hmm. he was asking, has anybody else had this experience? Yeah. But of course, you post something on Reddit, everyone, you well, know. Yeah, we'll say yes. Right. People just are, to be on Reddit. Yeah, I've got a human head growing yeah. out of my foot. So did my me cousin. Too. Yeah, it's like always. So I really would like to know what you guys think about this my whole thing is like so this happened twice mm -hmm. and you have all this experience you and your friends no one takes a picture no one films a video yeah this was 2018 2018 you have all that stuff all anybody does is record a tiny bit of audio yeah that is a little sus right so i was like uh but then i go to close the email and for some reason this old email a story that we had last summer mm -hmm. about the little forest people was up on my computer. Oh my gosh. Right. And it was a similar story of a woman who was camping when she was a kid, goes up to use one of those creepy ass outdoor toilets in the middle of the night uh -huh. and saw a small human-like creature running into the woods. Right. So then I'm like, well, now I don't know what to think. So um, crap, I don't either. I was totally like, this is a bust. Yeah. Until you mentioned that story. Remember this though. If you are going to try to convince anybody of anything, have some video or photos. Yeah. Uh, if there's that much going on, surely somebody's going to get a picture of it. Okay. So this next story comes from Kat. Hey guys, I've got a short little one for you today. So I'm 10 years old and I'm in my house watching um, television. Now my parents are having an after harvest party so they're outside with you know all the workers and stuff having you know some drinks and having some fun that meant that I didn't have to do chores for the day so I was excited so I mean watching bloody blue healers having the time of my life and I get this strange little feeling so I look to my left and I could see a lady in a white dress and she was in my dining room and then she's gone into my parents bedroom my parents bedroom door was a meter away from the television so um, as she's got to the doorway she's turned around she's looked me dead in the eye and she's done this you know, lifted a chin up and done that come here look, you know, that come here. And I was like, mm, no, you know, I'm 10, I'm scared, but I'm still curious. So I just kind of slid across in the lounge so I could see directly in there and see what was going on. And uh, as I did that, I looked in and I couldn't see her. And I thought that was weird. But I looked and focused on the ground in uh, my parents' bedroom. And there was a freaking king brown snake on the floor in my parents' bedroom. And it was sliding. It was freaking huge. And um, it was like, you know, sliding along. And then it stopped read up and looked at me and then went back down. I've obviously freaked the hell out and I'm like screaming my little lungs out. 
no one can hear me because my parents and everyone else is outside. So um, I ran outside and I grabbed my parents and then they've found the snake and I won't go into that detail. But yeah, so that was pretty crazy that, um, yeah, she warned me about this massive snake that could potentially kill us, save their lives. Anyway, have fun, guys, and you're still the best buddy podcast out there. Oh, that's Wait, so sweet. Is that best buddy? Best, best buddy? buddy or bloody? I can't. It sounded like buddy podcast yeah, to me. Either way, I like. Yeah, so that ghost lady saved their lives. Wow, I really thought the ghost lady turned into the snake. Oh, that's what I thought. And then their parents came in and apparently chopped it all up. So I was like, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I, I mean, thought it was the ghost lady saying, hey, there's something, come come have a look. There's something dangerous in here. I mean, that's what it sounds like from her version of the story, but I don't know. Yeah, guys, don't forget, find the companion blog, hauntedaf.com. We'll share any links or photos that we've mentioned today, as well as our YouTube videos, because we're actually taping these episodes now. Yay. If you can see me, you can see how awful I look today. You don't look awful. <laughs> I totally do. It's fine. I like your shirt. What is Thank your you. shirt? Cobra Kai. Oh, my God. <laughs> From Karate Kid and or Cobra Kai on Netflix. That's awesome. <laughs> also, while you're at hauntedaf.com, make sure you visit the online store because we've uh, designed some really cute merch. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we are proud owners of all of our merch as well. Yes. We got hats. We got mugs, T-shirts, masks. In fact, big love to Michelle, who sent us a picture of herself in a mask. There's Michelle. Oh, Hi, so Michelle. Cute. She's the one who suggested that we actually make the mask. So yes. Thank you. So thank you for that. And keep sending those scary stories to us. In fact, we just shared one today in the Patreon mm -hmm. pregame. It was Hillary last summer when she went on her summer vacation. Yeah. And one night with a bunch of friends, they're all at the beach. She just pulls out her phone and starts recording everybody's ghost stories. And we've been should. sharing those. So yes, get those stories for us. Send them to hauntedafpodcast at gmail.com so we can use them in season seven of Haunted AF.